Alright, so last time we introduced the idea, of binomial, the idea of the binomial distribution, which gave the binomial probabilities, the probability of k successes in n tries of an independent trial, where each time the probability of success, probability of success in each try was equal to p, and then the probability of failure was equal to q, which is just 1 minus p. And what I have up here are a number of plots. So this is a plot with, um, this is a plot when p equals one half, and what's happening as we go down here, n is, de n is increasing. So here we have n equals 10, and you notice that the center, the mode of the distribution, which we calculated last time, was approximately, the mode was approximately n p. And so it's somewhere right here. And as we increase n, you notice the mode shifts over. The mode keeps heading out in this direction. So by the time we're at n equals 100, which is down here, n equals 10, n equals 100, n equals 50, it's quite far out. It's around 50. But you also notice something else is happening. The width of the distribution, this scale here, is getting markably wider. And a signature of that width is what's called the standard deviation, which is approximately something proportional to half from the center out, is called the standard deviation. Which is usually denoted sigma. And in this case, it's square root of 2pq. Alright? I'm sorry, npq. npq. Square root of npq. And similar to the mode, and which is identical to the mode in this case, is the mean, which is another surrogate for the center, which is exact, which is another idea of where this distribution is centered. In this case, it is equal to NP. So have these two variables which give the scale, so I'll give the centering of this distribution and its width. And you can see a little bit how it changes. So you see the function of N and P. So when N is large, it's farther out. But if P is closer to 1, it's also going to be farther out. And at the same time, we expect that as p, if you can do a little calculation, because this is of course equal to, this is equal to the square root of n p one minus p. You can ask for what p is this biggest, and you'll find it's max when p equals a half. And now this is a picture of different p's, and if you look right here, the center one right here is p equal fifty percent or one half, and this is p equals ninety or 0 0.9, 90% or 0.9, and here we have p equals 0 0.10, 0 0.1, 10%. And you can, if you have a good eye, you'll be able to see that it's widest at the center one, it actually gets a bit narrower, as well as the mean shifting, just as this formula would suggest, the mode of the mean, the center changes depending on n and p. Alright, so whatever, the goal of today's little discussion is to say, how do we approximate this probability? How can we get an approximate probability? A, new, a formula which is maybe more useful to use than the big sum of all these binomial coefficients, right? We saw that the probability of k success in n tries was equal to n choose k p to the k q to the n minus k. And then if you wanted to find in a range, you have to sum up a big formula, right? In other words, if you want to know the probability, the probability of, of number of successes in some interval A, B, where those are integers, then this is the sum from K equals A to B of N choose K, P, to the k, q to the n minus k. Now that's something you can calculate on a calculator or on a computer, but it's not so useful if you want to have formulas. All right. So the goal of today is to learn a good approximation. But we, we already see something from this picture that if we're going to get some universal formula, we're going to somehow have to rescale things. So it would be reasonable to rescale things by saying we take the number of successes and we might want to center it, so we'd subtract off the center point, subtract off the mean, and then if the width is changing according to this sigma, the standard deviation, we might want to standardize the measurements of our width, so we might divide by sigma. 
and this is kind of considered a, this is what's called a standardized random variable. And so in a minute we're going to see how to use that to um, do an approximation to this binomial distribution, this binomial probability. All right, so what the idea to do this approximation that we want to do for the binomial, I want to introduce a curve called the normal curve, sometimes called the Gaussian, or the distribution named after Gauss, a famous mathematician. And it is the function little phi of z, which is equal to 1 over square root of 2 pi e to the minus z squared over 2. And this is the standard, if you read it this way, normal, or the standard Gaussian. And we'll often write n0, 1, because it had mean, 0, and variance, standard deviation. Sigma equal to one. The mean equal to zero, sigma equal to one. And if you plot this, what it looks like is if we plot z and I plot phi of z against it, it looks something like this. It runs off down to infinity in both directions. And then we define the normal cumulative density function which we'll talk more about later, but as the integral, we we'll call it capital phi, it's the integral from minus infinity to z of little phi of x dx. So in other words, if you pick a z here, it's all of this area under the curve. Okay. And so now, of course, if you only want, grab a little more real estate here, if you only want part of the area, if you only want, let's say, from A to B, if you only want this area of the curve, the way you can do that in terms of this function is you first calculate the area all the way up to B, and then you calculate the area all the way up to A, and you subtract the area up to A from the area up to B. So that would be the phi of B minus phi of A is the integral from A to B of um, capital phi, excuse me, phi z t z. Okay. Now, in general, in general. So this is the curve for normal mean zero variance one. But if you want to have mean mu standard deviation sigma, then that has a curve which is centered. That will have the function. That has a curve, a CDF, which is 1 over square root of 2 pi e to the minus z minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared. And, uh, and over here, there's a sigma squared. Okay? Alright, now it's not hard to see. So that's, that's, the, that's the density function of mu and sigma of z. And this was, in that notation, this is 0, 1 of z. Now it turns out that it's a simple calculus change of variables to see that the integral from a to b of phi mu sigma z dz is actually just the same as b minus mu over sigma a minus mu over sigma of phi of 0, 1, so the standard one, which we'll just usually just not write those coordinates of z dz. So this is equal to this capital phi that we defined of b minus mu over sigma minus capital phi of a 
minus mu over sigma. Okay, well, if we think back at these plots here, it's not unreasonable to think that maybe there's some way to approximate this with the curve that I use, because these curves don't look too different from the one I just drew with this function phi. And it turns out that that's true, and we're going to learn how to prove this eventually, or at least discuss some of the ideas in the proof, but let me go ahead and state the result. The result says, so if I plot that, the, if I plot P of K, so P of K will look something like this, it'll have a maximum, oops, sorry, it'll have a maximum around K equals NP, and then it will fall off from there in some way, it should all be equal width, I'm not such a good artist. And we want to approximate this by this curve that we just described. We want to approximate this by sigma, by phi, mu sigma, where mu equals np and sigma equals square root of np cubed. That's this curve we want to approximate. And if you think about it, if we wanted to find out the a, the probability for a certain a, well, the, certain, the integer right here, well then we, this is the integer a, we actually want to approximate it by, by, um, by taking, here's a, we want to approximate it by taking a little extra because it's kind of reasonable, this a here gets half, goes only to this halfway point of this curve, and on the other end it's reasonable to take to the other halfway point, and so this gives rise to the continuity corrections, and so that we find that the, the theorem says that the probability that the number of successes is in between A and B in N tries is approximately equal to phi of A minus a half minus NP. So the NP centers it and the minus a half is this little extra bit that I get. And then square root of NP, so I divide NP cubed, so I divide by sigma. Oops, I'm sorry, I got that wrong. I should be starting with the B, because B is the right hand side, so it's B, and then I subtract off the A. So let me make myself have a little bit more room here. Phi of A plus, oops, this is plus, because I'm going over a little bit. <laughs> Mess that up. This is minus one half minus NP over square root of NP cubed. Okay, there we go. So this is the normal approximation to the binomial. So it says that approximately, to answer this question of, of the number of successes between A and B in N tries, is given by these, the difference of these two integrals of this normal curve phi z, which was e to the minus z squared over 2 over square root of 2 pi. And of course, capital phi is the integral, capital phi, is the integral from minus infinity to z of phi of x dx. And so this is the content, this is our first example of what's called a central limit. Here. Okay, and they're often referred to just as CLTs. Okay, this is our first example of such an object, and we'll talk a lot about them, but it's important get started somewhere and get this idea. And so this is the idea of approximating the normal, I mean the binomial distribution, the probability of a binomial probability with that of the normal curve or the Gaussian approximation.